Hi, I'm Mrs. Griffin, and I'm here with a lesson on square roots. The definition of a square root is one of two equal factors of a number. For example, if we know that 7 times 7 is 49, then we say the square root of 49 is 7. So we take one of the two equal factors, which is 7. So make sure you're using just one and not writing 7 times 7. The square root of 49 is 7. This sign here is called a radical sign, and that shows we're looking for one of two equal factors of a number. Let's look at a chart here that will help us remember them. Since 1 times 1 is 1, then the square root of 1 is 1. Since 2 times 2 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2. Since 3 times 3 is 9, the square root of 9 is 3. Let's see if we can finish this. 4 times 4 is 16, so the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 25 is 5, since 5 times 5 is 25. The square root of 36 is 6, since 6 times 6 is 36. The square root of 49, as we found above, is 7. The square root of 64 is 8. The square root of 81 is 9. The square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 121 is 11. The square root of 144 is 12. So here we've got the perfect squares. These are all called perfect squares, the numbers that are under the square root, since they have an integer square root. Up through 12 is their square roots. Now if we're going to skip ahead and find something like 400, we know the square root of 4 is 2. Then because we've got two zeros, we can just use one zero. The square root of 400 is 20. So 20 times 20 is 400. Can you try that trick with the 900? What do you think the square root of 900 will be? Think about it for a minute, then click continue and we'll move on. Welcome back. I hope you thought since the square root of 9 is 3 and you've got 900, you can just use one zero. So the square root of 900 is 30. 30 times 30 will be 900. It's best to memorize your perfect squares, so that way you don't have to think too much about it when you're trying to find them. Let's go ahead and look at some examples. Number one, the square root of 36. Well, obviously from our chart above, we know 6 times 6 is 36, so the square root of 36 is 6. Number two is the negative square root of 81. We know the square root of 81 is 9, since 9 times 9 is 9. However, we can also see that negative 9 times negative 9 is equal to 81. Since 9 times 9 is 81, a negative times a negative is a positive. So when you've got a negative sign in front of your radical sign, that means we want the negative square root. So in this case, we want negative 9. So this way, we would just want the positive square root. This way, we want the negative. You can also use this information to estimate to the nearest integer. For example, if I want to find the square root of a number that's not a perfect square, like 115, I can put it in between two perfect squares. I know that the square root of 100 is less than 15, 115, which is 10, and I know that 115 is less than 121, which is the square root of uh, the square root of 121 is 11. So the square root of 115 has to be somewhere in between 10 and 11. Well, it's 15 away from 100 and only 6 away from 121. So I know it's going to be closer to 121, so therefore its square root will be closer to 11. And I can estimate it at 11. Let's take a look at negative 51. The square root of 51 falls between the square root of 49, which is 7, and the square root of 64, which is 8. Well, 51 is only 2 away from 49 but it's 13 away from 64. So it's actually closer to 49, so its square root will be closer to 7. And don't forget we're looking for the negative square root. So that's all there is to square roots. You can estimate, you can find negative square roots. It's best to memorize your chart, your perfect square chart, and that will help you with square roots. So good job and good luck with the rest of your homework. If you need more help with pre-algebra, you can find it by signing on with Nutshell Math. I hope I'll see you there.